Yeah. Okay, so that's a good segue into something I was going to show, which was how we used to do this. Um, so let me just uh, show you. This is a trip down memory lane. <laughs> Brad and Brian. Uh, I, I dug out an old sheet, which I am sharing right now. And uh, yeah, I mean the at the top of the sheet was was the basically the script, and that has changed very little. But going down to the sheet itself, uh, this was this was what we used to use. So it was a, just a uh, an Excel spreadsheet, and we used used it for check-ins. And it was uh, it was arranged in this way. Uh, and, and in fact, there were multiple, um, I guess, pages of this. You might call them pages. So so these are the people who who we get to check in um, each day. And then further down, uh, so I guess those were the regular check-ins. And then further down was a list of uh, people who um, who are less regular, I guess. Uh, people who haven't checked in for more than two months is down here. And so it was, first of all, very confusing because, you know, sometimes people would be up here in this top list, sometimes they'd be down here in the lower list. Um, but the biggest problem with this was it was it was not automated. Uh, it was a spreadsheet, but uh, the person who was managing the list, uh, it was a horrendous exercise to go through this each week and rearrange it and copy and paste um, the call signs, uh, you know, and, the, and all the other fields and uh, Sheet three was was a sort of history sheet um, where everyone was listed with with a history of how much how long they'd checked in each week going back uh, quite a long time um, you know uh, many years and it was it was really a judgment on the um, the manager to look at the history. And make decisions on who would be on the top sheet, and then go go in and, and edit that. The problem with that was often it would be uh, you know the the the, the 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 changeover would occur on on Sunday. It might be Wednesday before the manager had actually completed his uh, his 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 updates, and so the first few days you were working blind on an old sheet. And then middle of the week, you'd get an update, and ah, uh, it was awful. So what we've done now is is really automated this. Um, so maybe I can move on to uh, the uh, the current sheet. Uh, so let me uh, get rid of that and open. Uh, so uh, for anyone who's going to be in that controller next week, uh, probably what I'll do is I'll send you a, uh, an email with a link to uh, to the current sheet. Uh, so all you need to do, uh, we use um, the online version of Microsoft um, Office, which is Excel, Microsoft Excel Online. Uh, so all you need to do is click on the open, and it will open a version of, uh, of uh, Microsoft Excel Online, which is coming slowly here. No, that's fine. Um, yeah, so um, uh, so this is the sheet, and and in fact, um, I don't know how long uh, Brad <laughs> takes, but I can turn this sheet over now in about twenty minutes. Uh, you know, from the end of the net, uh, in less than half an hour, I can get the sheet ready for the following week, and uh, that is a major improvement. Um, so so this is the sheet. It's it's one long list, um, as. Um, as Brian, I think as Brian pointed out, there are 900 people on the list, um, but uh, we have it arranged uh, with filtered views. So uh, we only you only get to see the people who are on the uh, you know the regular check-ins or the occasional check-ins. Um, we used to have this color coded, but nowadays uh, it's uh, it's sort of highlighted. So the the ones who are bold. Are regular check-ins the ones who are um, in italics are less frequent check-ins 
and uh, there's some controls here. So the, the history is actually hidden here in this thing we call Robo Raccoon, and it uh, it keeps about five weeks of history. Um, and there's also some filtering that goes on. I call this the, the Bayesian Kalman filter uh, that looks at the history and tries to make a prediction on uh, who's going to be um, around in any particular uh, week. Uh, let me close that down. Using Excel Online is a little bit slower than using it locally. Um, so this this uh, column here is a prediction of the likelihood of those of that of each that of that person checking in um, in that week. Uh, you know, so uh, let's go up to the top. Uh, get some regulars. So uh, Peter's a uh, uh, quite a regular. Uh, Alpha Foxtrot Victor. So the prediction is he would check in 92% of the time. So he he's on the you know he's bolded. Um, right now the um, I've set this so that if you are more likely to be there than not, then you you get on the top of the list, which also takes away the um, uh, this sort of arbitrary decision. The, the 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 tool does it automatically. If you check in more than 50% of the time you're going to get on the list on the top list and you're going to get called in the roll call um, there are some uh, macro buttons up here that aren't available in the um, uh, in the online version uh, but if you if you download this or, or access this through the Excel app then you can run the macros which provide some additional features uh, so what was I going to say about this? Let me. Uh, I've got some notes here. Feel free to uh, interrupt if uh, if you've got any questions. Uh, so I'm going to continue to go through because uh, I know some people are um, well, maybe interested in the spreadsheet, but also uh, maybe uh, participating as uh, in the uh, musical chairs next week. Uh, so uh, we also. Um, print uh, a PDF version of the of the file uh, and we put that in in the same directory as the spreadsheet so that uh, if uh, if the internet goes down we you you have access to something that you can uh, write on you know on paper um, you've never had to use that uh, we have one of the advantages actually of using this uh, Excel online is that it allows multiple people to access the sheet at the same time. Uh, it, uh, it, it doesn't need to be saved. It's a live um, spreadsheet. Again, we, we haven't really made full use of that. In the DMR net, we do. We have uh, multiple net control, uh, multiple uh, loggers. So we have somebody who is net control who does not do any logging. And we've got about three or four people who are doing the logging. And it's a bit of a race of who gets the uh, the X in the box first. Um, usually, Patricia, pop her off the whiskey is the fastest. Uh, so, in with this sheet, uh, we can um, uh, if if one of us has a problem, we can hand off in the middle of the net to somebody else. Uh, Brad has, I think, picked up for me when I've had problems and not being able to continue. Uh, Usually we don't like to have multiple people accessing the sheet at the same time just because it it can confuse uh, uh, confuse people. Uh, so what do you want to say about this? Um, yeah, uh, so ignore the buttons. Bold and italics, I talked about that. Uh, most of the this spreadsheet is actually locked. So um, when we check people in, basically we're putting in uh, uh, either E or X, E for earlies or X for, um, ah, I need to enable edit mode, there we go. Uh, we either put in the E uh, for early or X uh, for a regular check-in. I'm not even sure why we, why we track earlies, but we do. Um, if we try to enter something other than E or X, like if I type in Y there, uh, press enter, it should pop up an error saying, you know, that's not permitted. So it's restricted, so you can only type in certain uh, certain fields. Uh, so the uh, all these other uh, sections are locked, so you can't change the name uh, or 
location. Um, this uh, prediction is also blocked. We can type in comments, so that field is open. Uh, we also have uh, these fields open for the call sign, the prefix, and the suffix. And the reason we do that is so that we can search on them, because if they're locked, you can't search on the field. Uh, so if I hit Control F, ah, I've had this problem before. Um, it's not bringing up the correct context. There we go. Uh, you get the uh, the find window, and we can type in a call sign like my call sign is XH, and we can do a find on XH. Oh, Ted's joining us again. Um, so uh, it it doesn't uh, yeah it doesn't find. Um, it doesn't go straight to XH, it, it finds the first occurrence of XH, which is EXH, and so we have to find next, and there I am, uh, XH. Um, so that's a useful feature to, you know, uh, move around the, uh, the sheet, uh, and you can leave the find box open uh, and use it whenever you want. Uh, other times, uh, I just scroll up and down. Sometimes it's quicker to scroll than it is to enter the the search um, uh, if, if we've got a new call sign then we just write it in at the bottom and in fact with with new call signs I usually write it on a piece of paper but uh, there is a section that down at the bottom where we can put in a new call sign and these fields are not locked so you can type in the the prefix uh, V E 7 A B C uh, who is this? This is Fred in Vancouver. And then we can put, fill in the, the box, uh, which is, uh, I guess, what day is it today? It's Friday. We're going to check him in. Um, and uh, there's, there's a little bit of color coding. Uh, it, it becomes yellow if it's somebody new or somebody that's not on the list. So uh, these here, like Andrew Zula Zula Sierra, he was not on the list um, when the list was first created at the beginning of the week, but he's been added since, and that's why he's highlighted in yellow. Um, so uh, normally the, the new people stay at the bottom of the list until we sort, and uh, in, um, in the online version you can't sort, these buttons don't work, but um, uh, in the application, um, yeah, you, you can do that. Uh, what else have we got? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to show the um, the um, application version in a moment uh, to show what extra features you can get if you have the application uh, but this is another hidden field where um, at the end of the week what we do is we check that these people who who are new have um, uh, you know are legitimate uh, and uh, this is something that uh, the previous uh, net managers used to do as well uh, and so we do a lookup and uh, uh, we, I do a, an automatic lookup in the QRZ database because that's the easiest one to uh, to look up automatically. Uh, and if they're not in the QRZ database, then we can either look up in the FCC database or the um, uh, Industry Canada uh, database. And, and I've got some links to, to those as well. So um, let me just, while we're talking about it, go to the information page. Uh, so the information page has has all the useful information that we uh, give out, um, like the nets uh, for the week. So this is what we generally read out um, 
join the net, uh, join the um, uh, the announcement part of the net. Uh, but there are also some links here uh, to uh, things like the ICED call sign database, the QRZ, and the FCC call sign lookup, which you're probably not going to use joining a net, but uh, could be useful. Uh, there are also some links to things you can see about um, the status of the network. So, uh, for instance, uh, there's a link to the All Star uh, node status. Uh, so, when this opens, you'll see basically all of the nodes that are on RPT. Uh, so this is the VHF node, the UHF node, the hub, and this is the IRLP node. And when somebody's on the net, uh, these light up to show uh, which ones are being used and which one the signal is coming in on. So you can see, you know, if somebody's coming in on IRLP, you can see here uh, that, the, that that's where the signal is coming from, uh, which can be a useful diagnostic tool when things go wrong. Um, there's also a signal level monitor, which um, when, uh, when people um, key up, you can see here the signal strength, and this is just a uh, RSSI indication, so it's, uh, it's basically 0 to 255, and most of the time people are sort of 255, uh, but if, um, you, can, you can also tell whether they're coming in on uh, UHF or VHF. And there's also a link to uh, the IRLP connections, so you can see how many IRLP loads nodes are connected. Uh, so down here we're using uh, channel 9009, which is currently not connected. But when people do connect to one of these nodes, you can see which nodes are connected. Again, it's, it's useful information that can help uh, as a net control operator. Um, then there's the script page. So this is the... This is the old script, basically, it's been modified a little bit. Uh, but also on the script page, uh, we have statistics on uh, how many people have checked in. And uh, it counts the earlies and the normal check-ins um, for each day of the week. And there's a bit of history. Uh, Stuart wanted to know what the history was. I don't know why, uh, but we keep the last five weeks. And you can see um, uh, what the average daily check-in was. Uh, over the last five weeks. So typically we're running around 100 to 120 or 30 check-ins a day. Uh, and this checkbox, um, what I do is I, uh, I, I sum the, the columns and rows and then the rows and columns and the two should add up. And if, you, if they don't, then there's something wrong with the spreadsheet. So that's just a, a check that I put in to, uh, to make sure the calculation is, is working correctly. So that that is the probably the easiest thing uh, people can do as a net control. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of um, doesn't require any tools other than uh, a web browser to uh, access the um, the spreadsheet. Tom, you've got a, your hand up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've thought the same is uh, we go through this list and I'm sure everybody's heard it every day. Um, you know, uh, is it providing value to uh, to go over this list each, each day? Any thoughts on that? Brad, Brian. Mm-hmm. 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 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, good point. Uh, yeah, I mean, I uh, I have used this list if I wanted to know where to go uh, for a specific net. I uh, My go-to right now is to open this spreadsheet and have a look and uh, see what uh, repeater they're on and what time. Um, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. Also on this sheet, we've got the uh, uh, the codes for shutting down. It doesn't. Uh, the XX is the secret code that you uh, you need to be a member of BCFMCA uh, to know what those codes are. Uh, but yeah, um, we have the ability to shut down the IRLP if it's causing interference. We can also disconnect the VHF and UHF. Um, uh, if if that's a problem and if all else fails we have what I call the backup repeater which is the North Shore repeater and uh, the information here is uh, you know uh, you can announce uh, that uh, that repeater and its frequency and and uh, offset um, so as for anyone who's going to be doing the musical chairs don't worry about this this is sort of advanced net control which uh, uh, and either Brad or myself are going to be there uh, all week while while you're net control, and if anything goes wrong, we'll be there to uh, help you out. So one of the things I wanted to do was show the advanced features. Uh, um, so um, if you um, if you were to log into the site, uh, when you click on um, uh, one of these. Um, uh, one of these files uh, normally you would open it uh, in Excel online but if you've got Microsoft Excel on installed on your machine you've got the option to open it in the application and you can click on that and it will open and I'll show that in a moment when it uh, starts up here um, and when this um, when this is running it it is still a live form it doesn't have here it is I'm going to move it over onto the window there we go uh, so for instance it's uh, um, you see it says auto save whenever you type anything whenever you make a change like I'll t type in an X there uh, what you'll see up here usually is within a few seconds it will say saving I don't oh there it is it said saved um, so um, in, in, in the same way, uh, using uh, the Excel application, uh, it is continuously syncing with the version in the cloud. Uh, but now we've got Excel, these, uh, these buttons work. And so uh, this list, which is a combined list of the regulars and the occasional, if I just want to look at the regulars, I can click on the regular list and it will filter it uh, so I just see the regulars. Uh, the other list are the people who are less regular, uh, so it filters it that way. The all list combines the two of them. And then the full list shows all 900 uh, people. Uh, so these ones in blue are, are what I call the cold ones. These are people who have not checked in uh, for more than five weeks. Uh, so uh, the, the bold ones, the regular ones, uh, they've got a 50% likelihood of checking in during the week. Uh, the italic ones, they've checked in sometime in the last five weeks. And if they haven't checked in in the last five weeks, they go onto the cold list, which is uh, all 900 of them. 
and then uh, if you remember I let me go back to the uh, let me go back to the all list if you remember we added Fred in at the bottom if I go down to the bottom we should see Fred is still there uh, you remember I added Fred using the Excel online but because it's all synchronized here it is in the um, version of Excel in the application uh, but he's not in the regular list yet or in the uh, in the top list yet so if I click sort actually uh, before I do that I will look up <laughs> I'll look up Fred on the um, QRZ data uh, see what comes back with that so I've just updated the QRZ data and I'll go down to the bottom now and in fact B7 ABC is not Fred it's Graham and he's in Parksville BC so he was obviously a pirate so we're going to ignore him um, we'll delete him or we'll make some adjustments if we got the name wrong or the location wrong we can we can uh, correct that uh, so if I sort the list then Fred will appear in the proper place I'm just going to uncheck those uh, so here's Fred he's now uh, in the correct place in the list and there's Graham in Parksville who is the correct uh, bit taker something not Alpha Bravo Charlie um, so that's the sorting uh, the Robo Raccoon yeah I can show you that uh, so at the end of the week uh, Brad or I go through the list um, we check everything we archive it we check the comments uh, see if anything needs to be uh, changed um, uh, we use, often put dates on things so we know when you know how, how old these things are uh, and then eventually we, we run Robo Raccoon which it, which does the updating uh, so we open this uh, hidden field here and this is the button that says uh, set up for next week press once only in in red uh, because uh, it goes through and it does all of the uh, the calculation of uh, you know looking at the history and determining and uh, you can see how quickly we can uh, flip the cheat sheets ready for next week I've just pressed the button and it will do all the calculation maybe a little bit slower because I've got so many windows open right now it's usually a lot faster than this oh boy when you yeah 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 it must be because I've got I've got so many windows open uh, right now uh, yeah so it's going through the process it it uh, there we go it's finished um, it goes through the process of, of opening changing the filters doing the calculation and then setting up the sheet for for next week so it clears all these fields and it recalculates the prediction and it highlights all of the people who are going to be on the uh, the regular check-ins and occasional check-ins and then we can close that uh, and we're all set for the following week and that's the magic of of this uh, this spreadsheet that this monster of a spreadsheet that we've created for the monster of the uh, rainbow country net that we uh, seem to have any questions any further comments Eric uh, sorry Jim <laughs> oh yes yeah I didn't show you that but uh, these two fields that aren't locked uh, if I click on one of these it will change color uh, and again this is only in the um, in the uh, the the application version there we go so it's uh, it's changed to green this one I can change that field to red uh, so what Stuart does is he does not like uh, using um, using paper at all uh, so when he's uh, when people are calling in uh, and they um, uh, well okay so one of the things he does and I do this as well is if I'm going through a list and I get interrupted like I've got down to Brad BWX and somebody wants to break in I will click on this um, field to mark the place uh, that I'm going to come back to so I can now take the the uh, sort of interrupt check-in and now I can go back and I see and see okay I was I was up to Brad I can continue um, but uh, but also during the earlies what I think Stuart does is he actually flags you know several of these as um, you know these are people that he's heard and he'll go back and then work down the list 
uh, by uh, seeing which ones are flagged and then unflagging them. Yeah, so that's... It's only in the Excel version, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> any uh, any other questions? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I do. Any other questions? So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's only happened a few times. It's it's quite rare, um, but there was a period where we were getting interference, and it uh, I, I think a good part of the week we were having to use the backup repeater. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, go ahead, uh, Michael. Uh, oh, the check-in sheet. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, when you say arrow down, yeah, if you click on one of these fields, you can use the up arrow and down arrow to jump up and down. It's a little bit slow. I, I normally use the scroll bar over here on the right um, to quickly scroll up and down. Um, the other thing, uh, I didn't show this. This is another neat feature, uh, which is the suffix search. Uh, and again, this is only in the application version where we run the macros, but if I type in uh, XH here uh, and hit enter, it will identify only the um, uh, the call signs with XH in. Uh, so you can see there, there I am. Um, and the, the one in blue is, is one of the call ones. So if somebody has checked in, you know, two years ago and they're still in our database here, uh, we can pull it up and see, um, you know, that that they're on the, you know, we can identify them by name. Uh, that often happens. Uh, and this this is actually also a wild card. Um, so if, uh, I guess if we've got X-Ray Hotel Bravo, what sometimes happens is I'll miss a um, one of the letters. So I might hear X-Ray Bravo. So I can type in X question mark Bravo, hit enter, and it will do a wild card search. And we've got two people who have X question mark Bravo and they're both regular check-ins well they're both you know they've both checked in in the last few weeks so still don't know who it is but it helps uh, where you've got you know partial information to be able to um, find um, uh, who are who are candidates what what will often happen is I'll do a search 
and one of them will pop out as you know the the regular check-in as opposed to an irregular check-in and it's more likely to be that person and we'll go back to the all list so uh, I, I, I would think most of you are going to use, unless you've got Excel on your machine, I think most of you are going to use the, um, the online version, which is um, which will be this version here. And in which case you won't have access to the macros, the search uh, filtering. Uh, you'll just have um, the sheet of a down. Brian, you 